lounging, son. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name's Ryan. And today I'm going to be going through, not quite that old, but it's getting there. It's I'm, I'm talking... And today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite 90s comics, and that is Batman Vengeance of Bane by Chuck Dixon, Graham Nolan, Eduardo Barreto. But before I jump into this, I just want to remind everybody, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, check out some of the rest of the dope content we have on the channel, hit that like button if you like the vid, throw your comments down below, and all the feedback, we love it, appreciate all of it. And now let's jump into this awesome 90s comic, 64 page special. This is the introduction of Bane. I'll be, I'll be real with you guys, this is the facsimile edition. I don't have the original, just as good as the original in my opinion. They, DC does the best facsimiles out of everybody that's doing them right now. And I'm talking, I'm talking Marvel. Like, I love reading the Marvel ones, gotta get it on this, you know, Almost as close to newsprint as you can get without actual being newsprint, but so good. Uh, like I said, Chuck Dixon, Graham Nolan, Eduardo Barreto are on here, and this is the origin and the debut of Bane. You know, he's to, you know after rereading it again, I haven't read it in a while, but he really is the antithesis of Batman in so many ways. Batman, privileged life, grew up having everything, had his parents taken from him, trains and becomes a hero. Bane, after his after his dad who had committed all these crimes is going to be charged without, you know, this is in Santa Prisca is where this takes place. Only a male can serve the sentence of a father. And so they take the pregnant woman or they take the pregnant wife. And now she's going to serve in time in jail with the child because he's a male child. So now he's born to a life. He's born to life and a life sentence behind the walls of, Panaduro, the prison and it's just so crazy to think about that like this kid grows up in prison and we're all this is narrated by uh this other prisoner and he goes by the name zombie so he watches you know the boy grow over the years and watches the mom waste away eventually you know she dies he's gonna be left with nothing and you know all the while he's like running around the prison but he's in protective custody and he's watching all this like horrific shit go down then watches his mom wrapped up and thrown into the waters where the sharks are gonna like eat her it's just super traumatizing like even as he's talking to this warden you know you see this like torture cage hanging up and he's like you know now you're gonna fend for yourself so he goes and you know, you see this creepy dude watching him. He's like, oh, well, we're going to become real good friends. And so he stays up all night. And then you see this other guy, Trog, who kind of takes Bane or goes to protect him. And he's like, er, you know, release him. And as, as, he ha as this happens, you know, young Bane gets thrown over and lands. And he's what looks like dead, but he's not. And then he has this, like, dreamlike sequence. And he's... a and he sees this white light, and who is it? It's him, older. And he's like, we are one. I am as you will be many years from now, what you will become. A physical and mental paragon. The living embodiment of human superiority. The blood of kings runs in you. The blood of your father. The world is yours and will be yours one day. Men will be like cattle before you, like sheep. For only a few may rule the many, and you are one of a rare breed. Only one danger stands in the way of you, your mastering the world. And he asks, what is that? fear such great writing such great I, I just i love the art i love seeing like you see as he's in fear of like and then this bat so it's kind of like ominous of like what what he's gonna see and face against in the future when he's older and he comes out of this fucking out of this coma whatever you want to call it and he fucking goes straight back to this dude that tried to take him and he fucking kills him and then this is where it gets really crazy is you can see that he's just he's lost it He's fucking crazy as fuck. And the warden is so taken aback by what is told to him that he locks him for years in isolation. And he he refuses to let the fear take over him. He survives for 10 years in this 5 by 10 foot cell. And no matter what, he uses, you know, he... He meditates. He travel uses that as as a way to travel outside, you know, outside the walls, having these dreamlike sequences again, fighting a bat. And what's crazy is like we don't even see Batman in here for the majority of this book. This is a bat 
Batman title, but in reality, it's really not. This is a Bane book, and we see like that he's grown this legend uh, while he's been trapped there, and now he is going to f- this guy Bird talks to him, tells him you know anything you need, call on me, I got you, and he's like. Ba- then he tells him about how he needs to get back to where he was from, set things right, and he tells Bane about Gotham, tells him about Batman, and now Bane becomes. Basically, this is what I was referring to as being the antithesis of Batman. Is like he's in a prison, but he's training. He's reading everything instead of using his network as power to get drugs and tobacco and sweets and all that stuff. He uses his network to bring in books, and he just keeps improving his mind and his body, taking out fools in here. And all the while, this dude Bird is like, you know, he's kind of just, you know, for lack of a better way of saying, chirping in his ear, telling him about Batman. And he, so now Bane is like excited and he now he wants to get to gotham and take down this batman it was his you know became his obsession and his purpose in life and then we get this like crazy prison fight he takes out 30 men maybe more and they take him and then they you know as and as they take him down we see that they've been experimenting on prisoners that's where we get this whole venom thing and they it's not working and they're trying to create the super soldier and then they use bane because he's super strong and he's the only one that survives it they implant these they put these implants in his skull so that they can administer the drug directly to through him and again we get zombie who's been narrating this and you know he talks about having to replicate this venom so that bane could transcend into his ultimate form and because he used this guy zombie used to make narcotics for his former employers as he calls them bane whispers his plan to him so he basically is able to slow his vital signs down so that they throw him into the water and they think he died and he didn't survive and then he fucking rips these sharks to shreds basically in my in my opinion he's now getting revenge for these maybe they're not the same sharks but for the sharks eating his mom and now he's free for the first time. And what does he do? He goes back to Panaduro. He sneaks into the warden's into the warden's house, and he uses him to get back into the prison. And he uses the warden to protect himself so that he won't get shot. And the army helicopter comes, and then they use they overtake the army helicopter, throw the warden back out. I love this with the stuffed teddy bear that he had as a kid. Throws it to the sharks, man. And now they go to the United States. They go to Gotham. And this is where we see Bane start his plans of how he's going to take down uh, Batman. Take over Gotham. And this is where he gets his headpiece. They figure out how to f- how to create this thing to, you know, directly feed the venom into his brain. And he goes to the, to the heads of Gotham, to these, you know, heads of Gotham. And he asks about Batman. He's like, I'm going to kill him. This is the guy that wronged Bird. And, you know, he sees him come back, and this is where they come up with the plan to bait Batman. This is the first time we're seeing Batman. We're 41 pages in, and this is where we see him finally. We see Montoya. We see Harvey Bullock, and they talk about how Jimmy No-No's Novak has been killed. So Bane hangs him up over. He's trying to lure Batman. I love these pinks that we get, too. And so now Batman's on the case. He's looking for for Bane. He can even sense him staring at him, and Bane's just hunting him. Kind of reminds me of like kind of like what Craven would do with Spider Man. But so now we get the first meeting. See Bane taking out all these. You know, he took out all these thugs. Batman's going. This dude's about to die, and we see Bane save him. And he just thinks Bane, Batman's weak, and he tells him, "It's like you do not kill. This is a strange, a creature cloaked in nightmare, a figure of terror in a city of terror, and yet you will not break the sixth commandment." I love this too. Bane says, one day you'll beg for mercy. And Batman, you're threatening me? Get in line. And Bane, you know, makes his escape. Batman takes his leave as well. And then we get a hint of something to come. Batman is watching out over them. Bane tells them, don't interfere. Gotham, Batman is Gotham City. And Gotham will be mine. He's going to watch him, study him. But... Such a great debut for a villain. I mean, a villain that has resonated, has stayed a part of Batman's Rose Gallery ever since then. And it's like, you know, every once in a while you just hit it. Dixon and Nolan and Barreto hit it with this one. Really dope concept for a villain. A terrifying one. One that will eventually go on to break Batman's back and start a whole, you know, long storyline of Nightfall. You know, and um, just such a great comic. So, if... I highly recommend it. It's collected in so many different ways. If you want, like me, to get like just the facsimile, 
I highly recommend getting that too. And make sure you like, follow, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid drops. And on that note, I'm out.